Hey guys, so now we have MySQL, PHP, Apache, we have all this stuff installed on our local machine so we can actually use, uh, it, it's a kind of like a, a local web server. Um, so what we're going to do is go to computer, C drive, XAMPP, and I'm actually going to create a shortcut on my desktop right to the htdocs folder. So create shortcut. Actually, I'm going to do send to desktop. So in here, we can create different folders. Um, this particular section, we're going to go over variables and arrays. So I'm just going to name this um, vars. Actually, you know what? I'll name them after the section. So this will be section, what is this, section 3. So in here I'm going to create a new document or a new file and call it index.php. Remember you have to have a PHP extension to use the PHP programming language. You couldn't use it in an index.html document. So we can open this not by clicking on it because it'll just open in window locally. Uh, we want it to be on our server, which is located at localhost um, slash s3. And that's all we need. Because it's named index.php, it works like an index.html. You don't need to add the actual file name. Okay, so you get a blank page here. And I'm going to open this in Notepad. And we can start coding PHP. So we can have HTML set up, so we can create our document, um, our HTML tags, titles, head, um, just like we would an HTML document, and we can just insert PHP anywhere we'd like. Um, we don't have to have this, uh, especially if it's, it's a, a PHP file that's not meant to display info, but to just do things. Um, you really only want to add this if it's an if it's going to be an actual web page. Um, so in this case, I'm not going to use it. I was going to, but there's really no sense in using it. Uh, so variables in JavaScript, we would simply say variable x equals five. In PHP, we need to say dollar sign. We'll call this x equals 5. All right. Now, of course, this has to be, actually, I'll show you what happens if you don't have PHP tags. It just displays the text. So we add our tags. Now, we actually don't need the, the um, closing tag, and a lot of developers don't use it. Um, but we're going to use it in this series. So now if I save it, it's not going to do, it's not going to say anything. Um, but we can echo it out. So we'll echo out x, and it's going to give us 5. So echo works just like document.write in JavaScript. And I'm comparing, although PHP and JavaScript are very different and are used for very different purposes, I'm going to be comparing them because we've already learned JavaScript. So you do have a foundation with things like variables and arrays and loops. So I'll be comparing the two um, and showing you the differences. So we don't have to just echo out variables. We can echo anything. We can echo any string with quotes. And we can use double quotes or single quotes. It doesn't matter. All right. Um, let's see. You can echo out integers, as you've seen. Um, so I guess that's enough on, on echo. So let's see. Let's create a couple variables. Let's say word1 equals hello and word2 equals world. So Again, I'm going to compare this to JavaScript. So we're going to concatenate, but the difference in concatenating um, in PHP is we use a, a, a period instead of the plus sign. 
So let's echo out um, word one. Now to concatenate, I'm going to use a dot and then quotes to put in our string and then another dot to add on word two. And I'm going to, this string is just going to be a space so we can space out hello and world. So if we save that, we get hello world. And again, we can concatenate a string, let's say at the beginning, we'll say, um, I just want to say, and then we need a period. And notice I put a space at the end here. So you can see we can add on a string to a variable to a string to a variable with the period instead of the plus. Um, let's see, what else could we do? I guess we could do some math. Okay, so we can echo out num1 plus num2 and we get 5. So this is very easy stuff. Um, so that's variables, not too much more to, to talk about with variables uh, that we don't already know. So let's move to arrays. So let's see, in PHP we can assign an array to a variable. So we'll say cars equals array. And this is the common way to do it. In JavaScript we would say new array, but in, in PHP it's usually just array. And we can add in values here. Let's say Honda. And I'm sure this all looks very familiar from the JavaScript lesson. Toyota, Ford. All right, so we can access these. You can say cars zero. So remember, arrays always start at zero. The values always start at zero. All right, so we can go up to two, which should be Ford. All right, and we can concatenate just like we could any other variable. The period. I drive a Ford. All right, easy stuff. Now, when we, if we want to cycle through the array and display or do something, we want to use a loop. Um, in PHP, most of the time you'll use a for each loop when you're dealing with an array. So we can do this by saying for each. And we want it. We want the name of the array, so cars, and then the as keyword, and then what we want to use as a variable inside of the loop. So in this case, it will be car. So we're saying for each cars as car, and then we can echo out car. Now we we want to concatenate uh, a break, a line break here. So if we reload, we get all of our array values printed out. So if we want to add on to this, it's going to be added on. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is associative arrays, which are arrays, but they have not only a value, they have a key. So let's do this. Let's create an associative array that represents a car. So we're going to say car equals array, and we'll say the first value we want is the make. All right, so we'll say make. I'm sorry, we need quotes. And then we want to use the equal sign and the greater than sign, and then some more quotes. And we want to, so make is the key. Now we want the value. We'll say Toyota. Okay, so this is all one value. It has a key and a value. And so we can use a comma if we want to add some more. And let's make another one with the key of model. And that will be Camry. 
And let's add one more. We'll say color. And we'll say black. Okay, so we have an associative array with three values, the make, the model, and the color. And we can access this by saying echo car make. We get Toyota, let's echo out the color, black. All right, so with an associative array, we can also use a for each loop. So let's say for each. Now the syntax is going to be a little different here. We're going to say for each car. All right, so we're going to say for each car as key value. So now inside of here, we can use key for the key and then that the variable value for the value. So let's do this. Let's echo the key um, and let's add a colon and a space and then the value and a line break. Okay, so if we reload, now we have the make Toyota model Camry color black. Now say this was a real world situation we may want the the um, keys to show up with a with an uppercase and this is this is a little out of scope for this section but um, just to show you we can call a function called UC words which will capitalize the first word and we can wrap the key variable up inside of that and now if we reload now we have the key with a capital letter at the beginning all right, so that's associative arrays. Uh, those are sometimes called hashes in other languages. Um, so that's really that's pretty much it for variables and array and arrays. Um, next, we'll get into loops, and then we'll look at functions.